Hi, and welcome to this new video from TM Quest. Today, we are going to learn how to create multiple letters from a CSV file. So for instance, here we have a bill from some company and it is addressed to Mr. James Doe, where the name can be found in some CSV file. And he has bought the following thing, shoes, socks, and a hat. And he has to pay the following amount. And all the information here, for instance, the name, the items and the amount you need to pay can be found in a CSV file. So what we are going to learn is to how to create multiple such documents. For instance, below here, we have an almost identical copy addressed to Mrs. Jane Doe, which are both a multiple of things like socks, hat, jeans, shoes, sweater, and so on. And she needs to pay 13,000 pounds, which can be found in the CSV file. So this was one of the things I wanted to learn you in this video. The next thing is how to create some text figures using a CSV file. For instance, I want to showcase how to use the information to create some diagrams in text. Okay, so let's get started with the video. So here is what we did last time, creating some tables using the CSV simple package. So we have imported the CSV simple package up here with the optional argument L3. And to the left here, we can see some CSV files. And today we are going to use mostly this file here. So this CSV file contains multiple columns like last name, name, gender, number of items, and where's and total. And what we are going to do is to make some bills using this information here. So let's go back to the document and let us start down here. So the first thing I want to do is to create a clear page here, just so that we can start on a completely new page. As you probably recall last time, we had the function CSV reader. So last time we used it up here to create the table. So this time we are going to use the same function to create the multiple bills. So we are going to write CSV reader and I'm not going to take in any optional information. And the CSV file I'm going to take in is the bills.csv. And here I can create some custom name. So let us not do it for now. And inside the last curly bracket here, we can create our actual document. So before I begin, I have some text which I'm going to copy in. And if you want to follow along, which I strongly suggest you do, you can find the text below in the description. Okay, so let me copy in the text and then I can explain what this code actually does. So what we can see here is if we go down, we have created a number of identical copies of the same document. So here we have the title, which is written very large here in the center, being built from cool company, which you can see here as well. And also we have this set counter to page one, which just makes sure that we start at the page one for all the different bills. So here as well, if we do not have this one, we will start with first the first page, then the second and so on. So we need to make sure that we have all the bills starting at page one. Afterwards, we have dear, and in here, we are going to fill out the name from the CSV file. So you've recently bought the following things is the next sentence. And here, if it should stand thing or things, depends on how many things you actually bought. So if you bought one thing or several things. And here, I just want to list everything you bought. And here, I want you to pay the specific amount, which we are going to find from the CSV file again. And here we are just like, the account number, which you can see here, which is going to be the same in all files. And then just like an outro with best regards overpriced company. So now we have at least a number of copies. So now we need to actually fill in the specific information. So let's start at the top here where we just want to give in the name. So if we go back here, we have the last name and the first name. And what I want to do is to have like a title, for instance, Mr. or Mrs., depending on the gender, and then the first name and then the last name. So let's try to focus just getting the name right. 
This we can do at a very simple way as we did last time. So first, the first column, which is CSV, call ii for the second column, which was the first name, if I remember correctly. Yes, the second column. And then the last name is going to be the first column, like this. So if I now recompile the document, I get Stina and then no space whatsoever, and then tmquest. So let's add a space by simply taking a backslash here. And now we have dear Mr. Stina at tmquest. So let's worry about the title here a bit later and just fill in the rest of the things. It gets a bit tiresome to write in CSV column all the time. So what we can do here is to give custom names. For instance, we can write where's is going to be equal to writing backslash where's. So this here corresponds to this thing here. So this name here needs to be the same as the column title here. And let me also write total. And I want the shortcut for this column to be total. Finally, I want to create the last one, which is gender. And I want this to be just gender, like this. So if I recompile here, nothing should happen. But now, instead of figuring out which column where's are, I can just write backslash where's here. So let's do it here to fill in what we have bought with where's, and then we can compile it to see that everything is correct. So here they filled in what I have bought and I have only bought a jacket. And we can see here that other people have bought different things. So we have Mr. Eirik, which have bought shoes and socks and so on, on James Doe and Jane Doe. So let us go up to the first one. And the final thing is to fill in the total, which is backslash total here. So let's say that this total here is going to be in dollars. So first of all, I want to actually add the space here. And finally, I want to add a dollar sign here. So let's compile again. So here we have that I should pay $1,000 to the following account in this bill. So far, everything has been very similar to how we created tables. But now we have some problems with the bill. For instance, so here I am obviously not a mister. So instead of mister here, it should say Mrs. whenever the customer is female. And additionally, I want it here if it say things or thing, it should depend on how many items you actually bought. So in this case, it should say that you have bought the following thing, not things. Okay, so to fix this, we need to introduce if sentences, which we have in the CSV simple package. So we have this shortcut for gender here. So let us use this to get this part here correctly. So in the CSV simple package, there exists several different kinds of if sentences. So in this case, we are going to work with strings. So in this case, we are going to use the if CSV string CMP function. So we write if CSV str, which is short for string CMP for compare. So this function takes in four things. So the first thing, is what it should compare the second things to. And if they are equal, it should do whatever is written in the first curly brackets here. And if they are unequal, it will do whatever it is written in the second curly bracket here. So the first thing we want to compare is the gender. And if we go back to the bills, we see that the gender can either be female or male which is uh, correspondent to a big F or a big M. So if we have that the gender is equal to a big F, then we know that the customer is female and we should write MS here. 
And if it is not equal to a big F, then we know that the customer should be male. So in this case, we can write M R here. And let me also take away this part. And I will also add a space here. So let us compile this document now. So here we have that for me, we have MS, which is correct. And if we go down to Eric, we have MR because he is male. And then on James, we have also MR because it's a male name. And finally, we have Mrs. Jane Doe because she is a woman. Okay, so this was one of the problems. And the final thing is that we need this here to depend on how many things we have bought. So if we go back to the CSV, we actually have this number of item columns, which tells us how many items we have bought. So again, we need to use an if sentence. And let me use another one since we are comparing now numbers and not strings. So if we are comparing numbers, then we can use the if CSV integer comparison. So then we can write, as I said, if CSV int for integer comparison or CMP. And this function only take in three things. The first one is a comparison. So in this case, we want the comparison to be equal. So we want that if the number of items we bought is equal to one, then we should do one thing. And if it is not equal to one, then we should do another thing. So in this case, we can write one equals and then the specific columns. So let me give this also a name up here. So number of items, I think, should be equal to backslash num item. So if one equals this num item here, then if it is true, we should write thing. And if it is not true, that would mean that the number of items is larger than one. Then we can write things here. So let me also delete this part here. So here we have now things. Here we have things. So up here where we only bought one thing, it is now correct. So let me just briefly talk a bit about this if CSV int comparison thing, because it cannot only handle equality with its equal sign here. It can also handle if we want it to be greater than a number or smaller than a number. So for instance, we can ask if one is less than num items, and this will reverse thing here. So let's see. So now we have things there, because in this case, we have that one is not greater than one. So in this case, we have false. But then in the other cases where we have bought a greater number of items, we have now thing here. So here is the last one. So if I wanted it to be correct in this case as well, I can just take this part and move it here. And this should work as well. So now we have things, 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 and thing here. So you can do several kinds of comparison using the if CSV int comparison. In this case, you could also use this string comparison by just assuming that one is also a string. So let's move on to the last thing I wanted to comment about, which is how you can use this CSV reader thing here to create six pictures. So this part will not be that long because essentially it is very similar to what we did before. The only thing is that now we need to begin in a tix picture environment. So first of all, I need to import the tix package. So if you are wondering how tix works or what tix is, we also have a video series on tix, which you can find up in the right corner now. Okay, so we take use package to import the tix package. And then we can go down. And now we can make a begin tix picture environment here. Like this. 
And I'm also going to scale the picture by two. So inside here, I want to create a bar diagram with all the exercise sets in the grade CSV file. So we have three exercise sets, and I want on the x-axis to be, have the name here. And on the y-axis, I want this exercise set here. OK, so how can we do this? So we can use the same function as we did before, namely this TSV reader function. OK, so let's do that. We have CSV reader. And let me not take in any optional arguments. And our CSV file is called grade CSV. And let me give in some names for the different columns we are going to use. For instance, name is going to be backslash name. And the exercise set one, where we have a capital S here, is going to be x1. And let me also copy it for the exercise set two and three. So the second one is going to be x2. And the third one is going to be x3. OK, so inside here, we can write some ticks commands. For example, we can write node below at the C3 row, zero. And at that point, I want to take in the names. And remember that in ticks, we always end the commands by using a semicolon. So let us compile this. So if we go down here, we see that we have filled in the names, which were Stina and Eirik down here. So now we actually want to plot the data. So then we can, for instance, make some rectangles with the fill draw command. And let's start with the first exercise set. So I want the color to be some kind of gray. I want to create it at the CSV row, minus 0 0.3. So this is going to be the lower left corner of the rectangle. And the upper right corner is going to be the C3 row minus 0 0.1. And now I want to take in the exercise set 1. But let us multiply by 0 0.1 to make it into the frame x1 here. And we always end with the semicolon. So let us run this. And now we can see that we have created a small rectangle here, where the length depends on how many points you got at the exercise set, one here. OK, so that was one column. So let's create two more, because it was three exercise sets. But this time, I'm going to copy it. So here we have a copy of the previous one. So now I want the color to be a bit lighter, for instance, 60 here. And I want to shift it a bit to the right. So I want the CSV row minus one here. And here I want plus instead of minus 0 0.1. And the length is now going to be the exercise set two here. So if we compile again, we see that we have a new rectangle with the data from exercise set two. And finally, we can take the third one where we just right shift it a bit more. So I have a typo up here. So let me fix that one. And let's compile again. And now we have the final row here. So if we want to make it nice, we can wrap the figure environment around it and center it. So what I wanted to illustrate is that you can use the CSV reader together with ticks to create some figures using the data. So see you again in the next video.